kids are working on a special project. It is Sunday morning, day four it's of like quarantine. Day seven for me. Or nine, day nine. Your hair doesn't look like it. <laughs> Stay tuned to see how much is in this brush so I kind of get these dreadlocks brushed out. Any more paint already? A lot of them we don't use or we don't use that way anymore. Uh, anyone who walks around today saying yay is probably excited about something. They're not just agreeing uh, with what's going on. Not a on. bad so way to attend here's, church. Here's, here's the CEB. There's the damage. So, <laughs> I'm almost six months postpartum. It definitely didn't go on this long with the twins. Really? Definitely not. <sighs> you can't tell. I mean, look at that. Look at that thing on your head. I have a, I still have a lot of hair. <laughs> Fortunately, I started with a lot. You know what? I read that you can put this in the plant and it's high in nitrogen, so it can help. Is that too much? Is this too much nitrogen for a plant? Maybe I should split it between the two. Um, so there's no doubt in my mind that this is 100% related to postpartum hormone whatever that goes on because the same exact thing happened to me with the twins and then it stopped finally and then it grew back just really thick right here and it was uh that's why i have bangs so the same thing's probably going to happen and it'll just be interesting to see <laughs> now that i already have bangs what kind of like hybrid bang situation i'm going to have here in a few months it'll be very interesting do you want to do a quick update on the kids independent playtime Spotty. Spotty at best. <laughs> Bear is... He's so good. Bear is the man when it comes to independent play. Lindell, however, is not. She struggles a little bit. She struggles. She's exactly like her mother. She needs to be around other people. She gets anxious. She's Rachel's clone. So, as you can imagine, she struggles a little bit. But, like, then once mm -hmm. she gets distracted and does, like, her sticker book or whatever, then she's good to go. Uh, but it's just kind of streaky. Bear, awesome. So this whole uh, being quarantined thing, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna shave. Why would I? I don't know. I won't shave either. Cool. So what's hilarious and a little weird, probably the best thing for these guys about cloth diapering, they really love to watch us put their poop in the toilet and to watch it get flushed down. Exactly. Bye, 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 so, do your kids like to see that? TMI. Okay, you can do mine, honey. Oh, that wow. feels so good. Good job. Thank you, honey. Does it look good, Thanks for Oh, thanks, honey. Couldn't agree more. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, thanks, honey. You know you're beautiful, right? Yeah, you can brush your own hair. I bought mom. I want. I want. Mommy! Mommy, go hold this. My ass wallet. My tongue. Can you say, Daddy is the strongest man in the world? <laughs> Lindell, do you love your dress? This is Lendl's new dress from Lulu and Rue. I'm my dad. I really I'm want mom. some stuff made out of this material. No joke. It took me forever to find a boutique that like met all the criteria that I want. I wanted everything to be super cute, of course. I wanted it to be very comfortable. I wanted it to be fair trade materials and made in the US ethically. And Lulu and Rue is a boutique. They have an online store and they have an in-house seamstress. They source everything sustainably, and their their priority is to make clothes that are really cute, but also really comfortable so that the kids can like play in them and nap in them. And that's really hard to find, trust me. I, If you know of any boutiques like that, please let me know in the comments, because I'm always searching for like new places to get the kids clothes. But they were super, yay! They were super generous to send us some items including the dress that Lindell's wearing right now. I was going to show you the rest of them, but Eloise is napping right now, so I'm going to wait a minute and then show them to you 
uh, when she wakes up. They also have some pieces for adults. They did send me a dress too, which I can't wait to wear it. But they are just like the cutest, softest, most comfortable clothing items. And a lot of them are cute on a boy or a girl. So if you wanna be handing them down, then you can easily pick items that are more gender neutral and then be able to hand them down to any of your kids. So I can't wait to show you the other pieces. Only day four of quarantine. <laughs> well, Bear's doing it right now, honey. <laughs> he does make it sound like a lot of fun, doesn't he? Oh yeah, it's one of the Lulu and Roo outfits. <laughs> hey, Linda, I, I can hear you, honey. I hear you, I understand you, but it's Bear's turn. She's awake from her nap, so I can show you the rest of this stuff. I just laid it out here for you. This is another sweatshirt for Bear. Super cute. Some, these are kind of like 70s style shorts for Lindell. A cute little shirt. A shirt for baby Eloise. A little dress for baby Eloise. It'd be cute to wear like knee high socks with that. And they're all real stretchy, so she can grow into that for sure. This will be really adorable this summer and nice and cool. And then, you know what? She could probably wear a long sleeve shirt underneath it and tights and wear it into the fall as well and winter. Some little shorts that can go over a onesie this summer. Dress it up. A skirt for Lindell, I want one like this. And this is like a little suspender skirt for Lindell as well. Same thing, like she could probably wear these this summer and fall and just dress them differently. And then this one is for me. So dang cute. They are really thick, really soft, super high quality. So I hope you guys check them out. It's Lulu and Rue and we'll leave a link in the description. Like I said, not sponsored, just really, really love the stuff. So last night we got a couple of scares. Mm -hmm. Well, the first time it happened was two days ago. Oh, it was two nights? Mm -hmm. Two nights ago. So we used the Owlet Smart Top. We used them on the twins, loved them. We used them until they were eight months old. At least, yeah. And we never once had a red, well actually we did have one red alarm. You can get alarms for improper sock placement. That's yellow, I think. You can get an alarm for being too far away from the base station, that's a blue alarm. Um, it, ha it has like the sock that connects to its base station and then that base station reports to your phone. And so if, you're, if the base station and the sock are too far apart, you'll get an alarm. But those are both yellow and blue. A red alarm truly means that, well I say truly, it means that the oxygen level has dropped below, I think 80% is the cutoff, or the heart rate has gone above 185 or something. Don't quote me on those numbers. It's if the heart rate or oxygen levels are out of the normal range. Thanks, Iris. <laughs> and that happened. Once, briefly, very early in the morning yesterday, and then it was happening consistently from 4 to 5 a.m. last night. And I kept going in, making sure, you know, she looked like she was breathing, made sure she was breathing. I ended up ultimately just feeding her and putting her back down. But, so what's concerning is, usually when there's a false alarm for either oxygen or heart rate, it's just one of those two that goes out of the normal range. But with Eloise, her oxygen dropped and her heart rate spiked at the same time. It gives you this cool graph, I can insert a picture here, a cool graph of both the heart rate and the oxygen levels throughout the course of the night. It's really, these are really, really cool things to have. They are definitely a luxury item, but if you can afford it, highly recommend. So anyway, I guess because those two things are happening simultaneously, it's a lot more concerning and warrants a visit to the pediatrician. However, 
it's the weekend for one and we're in the middle of a global pandemic so going in to the pediatrician's office is a little concerning for me so i'm chatting through the app with somebody from outlet and they're they're helping me troubleshoot they're checking this the sock placement on her foot so i literally sent pictures of the sock on her foot hopefully it's just a matter of changing up the size but i think because those two things were happening together it was and was your baby laying still and sleeping when you received these alerts? Yes. I guess sometimes when they're eating, their oxygen level drops normally. Just makes like sense. They're, yeah. They're eating and swallowing. And so that you can get some alerts. Oh, shoot. Oh, I thought I exited out. Um, so you can get false readings if you're doing that. But she was laying in her bed when this happened. And she was laying on her side. And so... Like, do you want to talk about what, like, what our theory was because she's on her side? <laughs> yeah. Or what my theory was? Well, Rachel asked the question, like, well, if your leg falls asleep, would that make these readings weird? But your heart rate wouldn't spike if your leg fell asleep. You wouldn't think so. I mean, maybe your oxygen would drop a little bit in that leg. Yeah, if it's reading the oxygen on her foot and her leg fell asleep. Yeah, but your heart rate wouldn't spike. Right. I know. Well, what's really scary is... They just confirmed the first case of COVID-19 at our local hospital. So, we really don't want to take Eloise in. Exactly. It's here. Right. And she is recovering from surgery still, technically. So, you know, what's really, really scary, though, is the first sign of this is shortness of breath. Like, just a dry cough, which she's not coughing, but... No. And no fever, want, no other symptoms. Think about the possibility that this is like the first sign of it. I think about it. Right. <laughs> oh, that was quick. Those are my army gloves. That was a wheel. That was a wheel. We had a big truck, big tractor. I didn't know you already had socks on. Bear, where are we getting ready to go? We're having a Thanksgiving dinner. Rather than just be in and be depressed, we're going to celebrate. Uh, we're just spending a lot of quality time together and really just having a lot of fun, kind of making the best out of it. So we're like, why not do a Thanksgiving dinner tonight? So Rachel just asked Bear what toy he wanted to take down to Mama and Bumpa's. He said the tent. <laughs> How's the Thanksgiving dinner? Good. Just taking the extra precautions. <laughs> yeah. That looks awesome. Yeah, it's it's a legit Thanksgiving dinner. It is. Dessert and all. Yum. Check the rolls, friend. Oh, we haven't seen baby Elo Eloise's outfit. Eloise. Eloise. Well, let's show it off. Cute. I know. It's just so cute. Yay. Another Lulu and Rue. So we're doing a video conference with Jen, which is, oops. What's, uh, what's Rusty been up to? Pee pee all the way. Just barking. Pee pee all the way. Um, just barking a lot, really. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's good. He's so Jen is Eloise's godmother, and she's out in Beaufort, South Carolina. So it's good to catch up with her. She's got a dog named River. Getting so big. Speaking of getting so big, look at those cheeks. Holy cow! Mm -hmm. 